Good morning. I would like to make a video this morning about the power of a miracle. And I know that there are many miracles that happen all around us all the time. Every sunrise is a miracle. Every time we wake up in the morning, it's a miracle. And um, so much beauty in life. And I'm going to share with you today a very specific instance of miracles. I've had a lot of what I would call intercessions or miracles in my life, but this one was probably the one that was the most extreme, if you want to call it that. And I think it's important to to look at this and understand this when we're looking at all of those things that are going on in the world around us right now that are, are very heavy to process. And um, I know that you can see how much I believe in the power of prayer and the power of music to truly usher in divinity into our lives and make change for the better. And when I'm talking about music, I'm talking about beautiful music, not a lot of what's being put out there today as um, popular stuff. Um, anyway, having said that, I wanted to share a story with you that happened to me when I was in my mid-twenties or maybe a little earlier and this was in the Yellowstone River. The Yellowstone River is a pretty big rapid fast flowing river especially in the springtime after the snow melts and I was with some friends and we decided to go tubing down the river. It was end of June and we were not wearing life jackets. We were on these big inner tubes and I thought, well, these people, these kids are doing this all the time. They're, they know what they're doing, and I just followed along. And I remember having said prayers to Archangel Michael for protection before getting on that river that morning. And so here I was on this giant inner tube, and we're bobbing up and down on these rapids, and um, it was absolutely thrilling. It was so much fun. I I was thinking this is like riding a wild horse in which is something I did in the Brazilian jungles which was also a lot of fun. And um and I was just loving it, absolutely loving it. And and then um about 15 minutes into our journey down the river, I noticed that the current was taking me in a slightly different direction than my other friends that were ahead, the people I was with. They were, they had gone, the current had taken them in, a, in another direction a bit. It was a pretty wide river at that point. And so all of a sudden I find myself sliding over what appears to be what was, a, I guess, a giant boulder, a rock in the river. And my inner tube flew out from under me and I ended up in a in a whirlpool of water in a vortex that was at least 10 feet deep. It was definitely several feet over my head and it was probably about 15 feet wide I would say. It was a very intense whirlpool and and I realized I, I'm in serious trouble here, no life jacket, and I'm in this enormous whirlpool and it's just pulling me down. It's sucking me down, you know, like, like Ulysses. <laughs> and, um, and so I'm a strong swimmer, especially back then. Um, and so I was swimming and trying to get back up, trying to get back up. And I remember, trying to come up at least four or five times and I also remember having no oxygen. I was not breathing. It was all happening without being able to take a breath because I was underwater. And so I absolutely gave it my all and at the fourth or fifth attempt to get up get back up and this whirlpool is just sucking me down. I I realized I was 
giving up the ghosts, as they say. And, um, and the last thought I had in my mind was, the forces of darkness have got me. And it was very sobering and very, very difficult. And it, everything went to black, to dark. And I, and that was that. And then what happened next was that time and space split like like if you were working on one of those old movie reels and or a, a tape back in the 80s and you would cut a piece of tape on a cassette tape and splice it together with a piece of scotch tape because there was the tape had broken or or something or there was a warble anyway it was like life, time and space, split. And like the intercession I received from a higher being, God, a master, or a combination of both, cut and split that time and space. And next thing you know, I'm finding myself on the top of the river about 20 feet away from the whirlpool floating on the surface now my body did not translate from the bottom to the top didn't it really didn't and it was like I'm at the bottom splice next thing I'm at the top about 20 feet away and one of my friends who was with me at the time who was around me saw this happen and he said he saw like an angel come and literally take me now I don't remember that part I just remember being in the darkness basically pretty much dead without breath at the bottom and the next thing you know I'm on top and I've got breath and of course I'm still what they would say freaked out you know <laughs> like Oh my God, am I going back into that thing? What just happened? And, and so then he brought me his inner tube and he helped me. And, and I was in a place of incredible shock. And as I'm swimming with him, still through some rapids, but at that point the river was not as intense the light shined upon me from the sun and I got this sense you're going to be all right. And then we left the river and um, I went and got checked out at the hospital and I was fine and fine physically to whatever degree, but it took me quite a few days to process this spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And I learned so much from that because I learned and I experienced firsthand that the time and space continu continuum is actually an illusion. But it's an illusion that can kill you if you're not careful. And I also experienced the intercession of the greater heaven world in this situation. And I realized God made the choice at that point to save me that my life had a purpose. Otherwise, I would have been done for then. And there's been many times in my life after that that have been so incredibly difficult and challenging. And, and I've had to remind myself that, you know, if it was all going to end, it would have ended then. So I'm bringing this to your attention because God only knows where everything is heading. And Honestly, sometimes I don't even know if God fully knows because of human free will. But I do know there is a greater purpose and a greater plan and that we're all a part of it and that light will prevail, that light will overcome, and that we're all living in a great play that they call Leela in the East, the play of the Divine Mother, the play of time and space, Kaldesh. So just wanted to 
share this with you to give you a little bit of hope and vision and the understanding that everything we do counts for so much and that in the end we are all in God's hands. So when we see the darkness around us, remember that light. Remember that light. And also remember, like when you turn on a light in a dark room, it lights up the room. When you put a flame in front of a wall, the flame has no shadow. Isn't that amazing? If you take a fire, a piece of like a like a lighter, and you, you the flame will not have a shadow. I've seen pictures of this. So that's why they say about God in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So with that, have a beautiful day. God bless you. Love y'all.